Hello, I'm Jeffrey Richardson. I'm the Chief Service Officer for the District of Columbia and Executive Director of Serve DC, the Mayor's Office on Volunteerism. The heart of Serve DC's Faith in Action initiative is really rooted in the fact that our faith-based organizations, their ministry is founded in service. Now our Most High God, we ask that on this day, you bless us as we convene to address our faith in action through Serve DC, its networks and partners, and the community of faith as we seek to learn more about how we can prepare our congregations, our communities, and respond when needed. Our Faith in Action Summit is an opportunity to bring together faith-based organizations in the District of Columbia who've expressed an interest in supporting the District of Columbia's emergency response systems. Our faith-based organizations are uniquely equipped and resourced to support emergency response before, during, and after an emergency or disaster in the District of Columbia. Uh, I love that it's a a faith in action summit, not a Christian or a Muslim or Protestant or Catholic. When we come together to serve uh, the community, which is what at our heart, what we all want to do, and we, we join forces, it is powerful. And when we come together, we bring that power in faith to, to make changes and to make lasting change and uh, bring hope to people who might not otherwise have it. Well, as a former firefighter, uh, I was an instructor for fire prevention through the city that I served in, and over and over and over, uh, I literally saw how lives were saved because of prevention strategies that businesses and homeowners uh, put into play. We never know when an emergency or disaster will strike, so it's important to try to be ready for those uncertain times. I have found it so important. It has become a great passion of mine. Every time I walk past a, a, a community store, a community event, I just want to say, are you all in here prepared? What will you do if something happens in Washington, D.C.? It's better to pre-plan and have resources in place and have plans in place to be able to support yourself, your family, and your community to be able to respond when something does happen. So what will your family do? Panic or be prepared? The faith-based community has been the heart of so much community engagement and service and community building, not only in the District of Columbia, but across our country. And individuals have deep rooted relationships and histories with their faith-based organizations, with their houses of worship. And when there's a relationship, there's trust. And particularly during times of emergencies and disaster, people turn to the individuals and the institutions that they know they can trust. It is in those moments when you need support and assistance, and you need it at a certain level that uh, can only come from uh, having a faith, having a, a spiritual belief, and being based in something that can comfort you at a very traumatic time in your life, regardless of what your faith is. When the faith community responds, if those relationships have not been set up, if they haven't been developed, then a lot of the efforts of the faith community when it responds to communities and families and individuals in disaster, they're not leveraged like they could be leveraged. People want to go where they feel uh, their normal connection, where they feel safe, um, and where they feel like their community will be there for them. We really can't have true resilience as a community without involving the faith-based community. They already have experience in responding to needs and crises within their own congregation and communities. They already have trained volunteers, that's increasing. They're already a trusted uh, entity. 
in the community. They have a presence in the community and that presence is there, uh, whether it's in the good times or the bad times or in times of disaster, the presence is always there. And so it's trusted. People need to feel that they've gone back to a level of normalcy. And the faith-based community can help us um, at the government level really get there because they can provide so, um, so many more resources than we can alone. You know, government is positioned to provide some resources um, and to set policy and to help fund and support programs. But we need our private sector and faith-based community to be able to partner with, to actually be able to accomplish and implement those policies, those initiatives and programs, which plays a major part when we look at resiliency and strengthening our community so that not only are we able to respond and recover, but that our communities are in a better place, in a stronger place in the beginning before something happens so that our recovery doesn't take as long as it potentially could. If we don't take that home uh, to our places of worship or, or our organizations that serve the faith-based uh, community, then it stops here. So the next step needs to be uh, taking what we've learned here today and what this has fostered and replicating it uh, within our own organizations and our own communities.